Today I get to speak to Tilly Lucky, most remarkable person, young lady, 15 years old. Tilly, how are you doing today? I'm great, how are you? I'm happy to be on and chatting to you again. <laughs> Absolutely, so happy to be chatting to you again. So we met at Singularity University in South Africa last year. Yeah. And it was just an astounding experience to meet you. I think I met your family and you, know, you come from such a warm and wonderful family. And it was just such a privilege to meet you. You are truly an extraordinary person. I think you're, you're inspiring many, many people out there. And it's just my absolute pleasure to, to have you on ShiftStream. So thank you for, for taking the time. Thank you. <laughs> so Tilly, you are a very interesting individual because you had some challenges earlier on in your life. So let's start a little bit about, about you. So what is it that you do in your life? Um, well, basically, I do a lot wearing boner combs, and this is because when I was younger, I contracted a disease called meningococcal septicemia strain B. It's a big mouthful, but it's basically a absolutely fatal disease, and I was 15 months old when I caught it, so I was told that I was like 100% going to die by doctors. There was no chance for me being so small at the time and as well battling such an awful disease that is so deadly as it is. I was basically given 0% chance of survival um, to the point where my parents were basically asked when I when the doctors would shut my body down for the machines to keep me stable. My family were asked if they wanted to come in and see me before I shut my eyes because they couldn't be certain that they would ever open again. So I was pretty much like on death's door. Like I was told I was going to die, but obviously I'm here today. I survived and it was after one week in intensive care, three weeks in recovery, a second year infection and 10 blood transfusions oh, that we got the news that. I was recovering, but they did have to amputate my hands clearly um, because the just the meningitis and the blood poisoning had really just killed off um, my limbs. They start like the tips of your fingertips and toes and kind of works its way up. So they did have to go, but I'm so incredibly lucky to be alive, but even to still have the majority of my body, like I've still got my legs and everything. And it went from being told that I had no chance, you know, I was going to die like overnight. It was that was it for me um, to be in where I am now, having only lost my hands at the wrist and now wearing these awesome binocombs, which I think are kind of better than human hands. It's not been like, too bad for me. <laughs> I mean, I can't believe how extraordinary that is to have overcome such a terrible disease at such a young age. It must have been incredibly difficult for your, your family. I can't even imagine how challenging that must have been. But to have overcome all that and now be the beacon of light that you are is, is truly remarkable. Now, what was that like for, for your family? Do you have an insight into that at that time? Obviously, you, you must not remember very much about that time, but you went through a harrowing condition. Yeah, absolutely. So I was really, really young at the time. I was only one. So whenever I'm telling the story, it's not coming from like my eyes and what I seen in the moment because I was one like I can't remember so everything that I know now and that I speak about has come from my mom's perspective and there's so many little details which I'm sure she could tell you about which I don't know because I wasn't like physically yeah. there in the moment I mean I was but I wasn't like, yeah I was absolutely a baby. I don't know too much, but it, I know it was definitely a very hard time for them. And I've got an older sister and I had an older sister at the time. So it was really tough for her as well. And she was staying at my Nana's house the whole time. Really lucky to have my grandparents because she was like, she had nowhere to stay otherwise. And I was in hospital all the time. My parents were with me as much as they could be. But of course they did have another daughter at home and a funny kind of, story I mean not really funny but kind of funny at the same time and um, whenever my sister would come and see me in hospital or whenever my like parents would be leaving my sister had been like right see you soon we'll off to see Tilly um my sister had came to see me before and she kind of got upset with my mom one day and she just said mom I want to go to the park and my mom was like what do you mean? I want to go to the park too. We can't really go to the park right now. And basically what my sister thought that we were doing um, without her all the time was 
they were taking me to the park because the septicemia had like well and truly destroyed my hands so that they were kind of like scabbed over and purple and she kind of just saw that as mud so it's a oh. really weird way a proper like kind of wholesome innocent thing that a like a four-year-old at the time would think but that is like a funny little detail I guess and that's what she thought we were doing the whole time which we obviously weren't we were dealing with something much bigger than that but <laughs> I mean it's such a as you say it's like wholesome but also it's it's such a like almost tragic story that she, she was I suppose processing it as well in her own way and it must have been extraordinarily challenging for your family but Tilly you have turned this into something that is just a beacon of light just a beacon of light and the, these immense challenges that you went through have created the Tilly that we see today so maybe let's start talking a little bit about um, Tilly now I know you're in school which uh, which when we chat I, I'm often <laughs> surprised by because you've got an immense wisdom that belies your age and I'm sure that shortly we'll be unpacking some of that but tell us about what you do in your daily life now uh, well my daily life is pretty busy I'm doing a lot of things I mean obviously you know I do motivational speaking as do you that's where I met you which was great um I tuned into your motivational speech and I was like yes Adam he's just got it you know so you're a big inspiration for me after I saw that um Jeez, but that yeah world, thanks, been... <laughs> <laughs> it's all good um only the truth um, but I'm doing like quite a lot of different things. I'm 15 years old currently and I'm sitting my GCSEs and I have been like all throughout this month and my last one's on November 3rd. So I'm nearly kind of through with that now, but I have another set of GCSEs I'm doing next year. But a lot of people are curious as to how I'm doing my GCSEs and that's because I'm homeschooled. I kind of became homeschooled because because of the meningitis that I had as a baby, it's not really just a disease that you can just, once you survive it, you survive it and it just nip it in the bud like that. So when I've been growing up, I've found like different problems that it's caused. Like my left leg has actually stopped growing completely. I'm four foot 11. So, you know, that's fun for me. going to be short for life. But I ended up missing a lot of school. Like my attendance was pretty bad because I had this big operation and I couldn't walk. I was immobile for, um, I think it was like six months. It was a long procedure and I had this big cage on my leg. So we find, found it like just easier, collectively decided in my family that homeschooling was the better option for me personally. And I feel like I just work better um, in my own time and I've got other things going on with the motivational speaking the traveling I do I'm doing a bit of presenting recently which I didn't expect myself to be doing and um, so yeah it's all kind of kicking off at the moment but I've still got to juggle my GCSEs around that but I'm it's great because I'm being able to sit the GCSEs I'm doing this year a whole two years early leaving me so much time to do everything that I want to do as well but I feel like education is just as important as career and experience is really important to me and I feel like that's the best kind of education that you can get when you're really going out there and like seeing everything like head on experiences are really really educational so I'm doing I'm doing pretty good there's a lot on but it's good. Wow, it does sound like there's a great deal on. So you mentioned that you are doing some presenting. Can you tell me a little bit more about what it is that you're doing in presenting? Just a little yeah. bit of presenting here and there. <laughs> Just a little bit. Um, I've only recently started. I'm pretty new to it all, as you can imagine. Um, I went on this show called FYI. It's like just a little Sky Kids news little thing. And basically, well, it's not that little. Actually, it gets like millions of streams. Millions of it's, streams. It's a cute little show, <laughs> isn't it? Um, but I was basically on one of the spin-off show and this spin-off show was called Wow and it was all about technology. So it's a, a children's show which is presented and made for kids by kids. So it's really cool like that. And I was actually on the show as a guest showing off my brainicoms, like the technology advancements in the world, which a lot of people like uh, are not really um I like don't really know how much technology has advanced because it has a lot and so I was on as a guest being interviewed by one of the reporters on FYI and then I ended up going for an audition to be on the other end of it and be a reporter myself so I got that and I'm doing that now so I'm on like nearly every I think it's Saturday at 10 a.m and then it plays again at like half 
four or something like that. I'm not entirely sure. Don't quote me on that. But I basically film for them like every Wednesday, every other Wednesday. And that goes out and it's like seen on in schools. It's seen online. It's seen on the Sky News channel itself. So it's really, really cool. And I've only been doing it for like maybe four weeks now, but I'm really enjoying it. And I feel like I'm learning a lot as well. Absolutely. And it's, it's truly extra it's extraordinary. You, you're balancing a lot. Your motivational speaking has seen you on singularity stages all over the world. Um, I think you, you know, you, you're also very humble, so you don't necessarily say how impactful it is that you've been, but you, you've motivated people into probably the millions. Millions of people have, have heard about Tilly and know a little bit about Tilly's story. Um, and Tilly, that is absolutely it's, it's astonishing. It's truly astonishing. And I think that none of this would have happened if, well, you may have been, your personality is dazzling. So you may have been, you know, found your way to show business or something is similar in, in your own right. But your journey has been a lot informed by what's happened with your robotic arms. So yeah. I want to start off by understanding a little bit about that. You played a big role in uh, open bionics. Can we talk a little bit about that? Sure. Um, so when I was having my hands amputated, I was really, really lucky in the sense that at the time the surgeon asked my mom because I was one, I couldn't really make the decision for myself, but he basically asked her if I'd be interested in prosthetics in the future, something she hadn't really thought about. And I couldn't make myself like the decision so she just said yeah and then he amputated in a way that would be really easy for me to wear prosthetics so ever since then like growing up I really wanted to try out wearing prosthetics it always seemed really cool I loved the kind of the idea of it I feel like as well I always kind of had like an obsession with fingers I guess because I didn't have them myself like I would my mom will tell you like I would just sit and like play with her fingers and like play around and I do that all the time with these now and I do actually like bite my fingers as if I've got fingernails which I don't but like anyway um I feel like it's just growing up I really had this big thing around it and I really just wanted to try out like what is out there what could be helpful like what do I want to do if this is available but it was then I kind of realized that there really wasn't an awful lot available there was a lot of really cool advancements being made at the time in like 2008 um for like adult prosthetics but I was two um so there wasn't really anything at all out there for young children and just like kids in general I was just offered a glove like multiple times and I kind of it kind of defeated the point for me because I felt like I was always been told and like given stuff to mask the fact that I've got a disability when really I just wanted something that would help and it was just society assuming things again which they like to do a lot um but I basically my family had to fight for me to get a hand that would actually move which led to me being the first, the youngest child in the UK to receive a myoelectric moving prosthetic arm and I was always just really really excited by it but they were quite limited like I felt like there was a lot of money going towards these hands which I and my family were fundraising for ourselves with the help of so many incredible people in our community and I was getting these arms but I kind of felt like whenever I wanted to do anything practical, I would take the prosthetic, which was supposed to be the helpful medical device off to do that because they just weren't advanced enough. Like I couldn't even hold a cup because the hands couldn't open wide enough. So I was in the back of the car one day with my mom and I just had a kind of a little realization. And I said to her, you know, mom, is this what's out there? Like what do other kids like me do? do is this are they being offered the same thing as I am this hand that can't open even wide enough to hold a cup and she was like yeah you're getting um what everybody else is being offered like yeah this is this is this, this is what's out here right now and that kind of really struck a nerve with me I guess because I lost my hands when I was really really young so I feel like I've adapted really well I'm definitely a very independent person and I've just kind of found my own way to do things that I want to do but I used to kind of really worry about the people who had had hands their whole life and then literally could just lose them overnight like it could happen it could happen to you tomorrow and it was more aimed at kids as well because as I said there was bits and pieces out there for adults but never anything for kids 
So I used to just think, well, if you're like seven years old and then fell ill or any kind of event could happen like I know people who've been hit by a train and lost parts of their limbs or like their legs anything like that could happen and there was just wasn't the devices out there to support that so I kind of set off on this little mission and I've worked with prosthetic companies kind of my whole life just trying to develop something to help a little bit more than what they had and I'm currently working with Open Bionics who make these really cool bionic arms. This is called the Hero Arm and it's really, really cool. I love it so much. I feel like what I love about it most is that I feel like the prosthetics I had in the past, as I said, I was given a glove. And then after that, I was spending all this money to get a really realistic material. And it was almost like you would wear this prosthetic arm, which didn't really necessarily help you, but you would wear it so that other people around you felt comfortable. That's kind of the vibe I got from it, which I really didn't appreciate. But I feel like these bionic arms are more like accentuating that difference. Like there's a light on the back here. It's like pulsating. It's pretty cool. Very it's cool. like got cool designs. You can have different colors. You can have, I had some with LEDs in at one point and that was pretty sick. Um, so yeah, it's really, really cool. And it's helped me both mentally and physically because obviously as you can tell what I've been doing, there's a lot more movement in these. Like I could hold a cup just fine. So yeah, it's definitely improved a lot. And I'm just really happy to be a part of that journey. These are a pretty fresh product. So it's crazy to me to think like what could be available in like the next five, 10 years. It's going to be really exciting. And I'm really happy to be a part of that journey, I guess. It is going to be really exciting. And it is an astoundingly profound thing that's happened so during your lifetime you've gone from wearing prosthetic limbs that you felt were really about other people's impression of you and making them feel comfortable which is a whole another story I mean that that is a, a big deal that we need to discuss in and of itself all the way through to being involved in describing the type of arms which would help you and be functional adopting those into your life and now really going around speaking about this journey that you've been on because of all of this, which is truly, truly astonishing. Yeah, and I get asked the question like all the time, all the time, um, if you got the choice, would you ever like go back and change what happened with your disability? Because my disability is like what's put me in this situation. I wouldn't be working with prosthetic companies here today had I not had I have hands like it just wouldn't happen and I've gotten to do so many incredible things so my answer always to that question is just no like if I could if I could get in a time machine and hop back to like 2007 and manage to not catch that awful disease it's an awful disease and it needs completely wiped out but I do feel like everything happens for a reason and had I not gone through that and had I not come out the other end of it I probably wouldn't be the person I am here today I definitely wouldn't be doing what I'm doing um which I love what I'm doing so that would be pretty sad I guess and it's really crazy for me to think about what how different like my life could have been right now I'm sitting my GCSEs that's I wouldn't be doing that I'd be at school like public school I'm doing them in like two years which sounds great for me right now but other than that I've got to do so many incredible things like mo my motivational speaking as you said is surrounding everything that's happened and all my experiences the people I've met I was able to sit on a panel with the Dalai Lama like with Singularity U so that's next level and all of these next experiences level massive like I still can't believe that happened um but all these experiences wouldn't have happened before so I'm kind of happy I guess that everything that's happened all those traumas that have occurred I'm kind of happy that they did in a way um because it's made me who I am and I I don't know where the hell I would be without it <laughs> absolutely I mean these are the things that uniquely make Tilly Tilly and they're just attributes of you. And this is just kind of, I often speak about people having different dimensions. When I speak about people's challenges, this is just really one dimension, but it has been something that is so unique to you that it has created some magnificent insights, which you have. And I spoke a little bit earlier about your wisdom. And I think it's, it was really astonishing when we spoke recently, when I interviewed you for Singularity U uh, to, 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 understand some of the insights that you've gained through the course of your life. And what was really inspiring to me was the way that you spoke about disability and how it's perceived in society. 
Now, before I ask you a little bit more about that, I just want to make sure that it's, it's clear to everyone. You mentioned the term myoelectric. So myoelectric means that your muscles have some activity and that's transduced into an electrical signal. And you are actually controlling that robotic arm with your brain right now to make the movements happen. So it's seamless. It's, it's really that this device is becoming a part of your body. And that, that, is, that is an exceptional, yeah. It's an yeah, exceptional um, piece of tech. Mm. Yeah, so I can like, I can still kind of like feel my fingers, although they're not there. I get asked about like phantom limb pain and like itchiness a lot, which I don't actually get. But I feel like just the way I've, my arm has been amputated, like I've still got those kind of nerves, I guess. So basically all I'm doing on the inside is I can like throw a peace sign right now. I'm doing it, yeah. but you wouldn't know because it's not there. But it's really cool when you have the hand and I can just... That's what I'm it's trying so to do. It, it's really fun, like just seeing it there. Like it shouldn't to a lot of people, it's not a big deal just to be able to shake somebody by the hand and throw a peace sign here and there. But to me and to other amputees or people with limb differences at all, it's pretty huge. And yeah, it's made a big difference. I think. I have no doubt. And it, it's really it, astonishing is the only word you had this visionary doctor who seemed to amputate in such a way as to enable you in this way. So, I mean, a big shout out to doctors who are thinking about the future of a person and not just the immediate moment. Um, that, is, that is an awesome thing to recognize. Uh, I think then, you know, I'd like to, to chat to you a little bit about this concept of disability. We've chatted a bit before about disability and understanding and framing disability a little bit differently and how this, there hopefully is a change now. So we spoke about those prosthetic arms that were made to make other people feel comfortable, which is such a, such a huge disservice to the wearer. And it's so great that we've come so far. Now you've got these radical, awesome robotic arms that aren't actually trying to resemble anything real because they don't need to. They're, they're sort of an accessory as well. There's, there's another layer of awesomeness to it and they almost exactly. become more desirable. So do, do people ever say to you, hey, the, those are the coolest things or have they influenced culture at all? Absolutely. I feel like pretty much my whole life, I've just been given them. I like my family had to do serious fundraising for these hands. I had some at some point that were, I think, £36,000 for the pair of them, or maybe just one. I can't even remember, to be honest. And um, that was a long time ago. But it's insane. It's like absolutely insane. It's a medical device. I feel like everybody should have access to, like it should just be a given. If you're missing limbs and want to wear a prosthetic device and want to have a hand, then it should just be like a thing that you can get. Um, but yeah, I feel like my whole life I was just given things um, to kind of mask that. And it's never actually what I wanted. Um, they never actually stopped to think what does our target audience actually want out of a prosthetic device and that's something that open bionics did do differently so they had this big survey and was just like they gave it to a bunch of amputees and they just said okay draw your dream and not one person drew a realistic looking arm and it was a thing that was just completely overlooked by everybody in that department they never actually stopped to ask the user what they actually wanted which is insanity to me but i think i mean that that's why the hero arm's doing so well and the thing is we never really wanted to hide away and people do get to the point I definitely got to the point where I was like starting to roll down sleeves to cover up the fact that I had no hands, but it wasn't really covering up the fact that I had no hands. That's never been something I've been ashamed of. To me, I would do that just simply because I was sick to death of the stairs constantly all the time. And again, this problem stemming from people in like just out in society walking down the street who are completely uneducated to people with disabilities like how they live and I was so done with people making assumptions about me and jumping to every single conclusion under the sun that you know oh she's got no hands oh wow she must be depressed oh wow she must have a really sad life oh wow she'll probably be on like she'll never be able to get a job properly oh her life must really suck I should be more grateful for mine because like look at that you know what I mean and it's all still just what has been drilled into people's brains 
through society and it's not shown enough on TV screens or anything, I don't think, which is why I'm really happy to be doing like different pieces of presenting and stuff. So I'm really, really grateful to be able to share my story on social media a lot. I feel like social media is really important because you can reach a much larger audience because it's all great, me going outside and seeing every single person who's ever stared at me and just going, hey, you know, I don't, I, yeah, I don't have any hands, but it's okay. You don't need to feel sorry for me. I don't want this but more um with these bionicoms now it's definitely like you say a lot more exciting like I used to have I used to have kids that look at me and I don't mind the kids as much because they they don't know any better they haven't been taught any better and they were kind of just like really just stare and they're a bit concerned like why hasn't she got any hands because it's something they haven't seen before more of the problem came from when they would like ask their mom um quite loudly they'd just be like oh man like why hasn't she got any hands like what's going on there where are her hands gone um and then the parents quick reaction like worried and it was always the parents like the fear that they're going to offend me which they never really did so they would kind of just like pick the kid up and like spin them around and run the other direction but it kind of just makes anybody with a disability and any person who ever had that experience as you can imagine it makes you feel like very abnormal and like not okay so I definitely got to the point where I would just roll my sleeves down just to avoid like the miscommunications and everything but you shouldn't have to you know what I mean so now I feel like it's really really much better because it's not a sympathetic sad story I'm not getting like stares of fear or concern where the hand's gone um it's more like kids especially which I think is really cool being kind of excited by it people now want to come over and like shake me by the hand and it looks like something out of like some kids favorite superhero movie and I think that's really cool as well like if I saw if I didn't if I was an able-bodied person and I saw somebody walk down the street with light up arms, you're going to want to go be their friend. Like you're going to want to shake this hand. Like this is the future we're talking about. It's what we've all been dreaming about in the sci-fi films, like back to the future, 2020 flying cars, where are they? But you know, um, it's, <laughs> it's a really cool advancement, which a lot of people like aren't aware of that is actually available right now. Like this is some big stuff. So it's always really great getting to see the much more positive reaction it gets of people and people are really really excited to see how far I can go in the future I I am too like I add myself to that list I am people but it's always really really fun and now I pick up my arms like you say as kind of like a fashion accessory as well as a medical device they help so much but also they're really really cool and since they are so customizable like you can have them any color I always match them to my outfit and people always admire that when I go out and I feel like it's just so much more fun like I just have a good time with it to be honest and that's what open bionics are doing which no other prosthetic companies have been able to achieve yet oh it's it sounds like they are really way ahead and there's a, there's a lot to unpack in what you've just said. But first off, do you think that the general perception of disabled people has been changing in, in society? I feel like there's definitely a lot of discrimination, which still happens in the world, unfortunately. Um, otherwise, I wouldn't be an activist for it. Um, it's I feel like in the future... And now I feel like the same thing happened with like racism and all of this. And I just feel like people are people, whether you've got a disabled body, an able body, the color of your skin, how big you are, like the size of you, the color of your hair, the culture, what you believe in, it really, really doesn't matter. At the end of the day, we're literally all energy. We're literally all floating on a rock in the middle of space. Like it's really not that deep. We're here to have a good time. There should be no judgment. I don't understand why people get so wrapped up in other people's lives. It could never be me because I'm just like, you only get one life. Why are you going to waste it being sad? Why are you going to waste it caring about what other people's negative opinions have to say about you really don't give people that time of day and I feel like it's just that's kind of what I live by you only live once so the world I feel like has got more accepting over time 
but there is a lot of activism that still needs to be done. I feel like we had the whole Black Lives Matter movement and the disabled community is the largest minority in the world. There's really not a lot of people who are speaking up about it. And so many people are oblivious to what the type of discrimination which still persists in the world, but they're not aware of it because it is such a large minority. So they don't understand what it's like living with a disability, what it's like not being able to walk down the street without every single person's eyes being on you, without people making assumptions and jumping to conclusions about you all the time and treating you differently in general, just in a conversation, like looking at your difference rather than your face while you're having a conversation. It's really weird like that. And that's kind of just want to, that's what I want to kind of share as much as possible. And just, I feel like the best way to do is just allow people to become more aware of that, that it does exist and then work on tackling that and teaching people how to just treat people with kindness, treat people like the normal person that they are, whether you've got a disability or not. Like I'm just as normal, like we're just as normal as like my dad, the person walking down the street, we're all, just energy up and about so it's really really not that deep but it's an issue that still needs a lot of talking about because a lot of people don't seem to see that the same way absolutely right Tilly. and it's astounding that we're, we're still having these conversations in 2020 we're not yet in the future so some of the technology that you're talking about is so amazing and it's so enabling it's so wonderful because it's it's helped you so much and helping other people too these devices are exceptionally promising and it's juxtaposed against our society. It's in our society in which we're, you know, in which we have not yet figured these things out. And it's, it's such a shame. It's such, it's such a shame that the Black Lives Matter movement had to happen in 2020. I, right? I know. I, I literally, I heard about it. I was actually shocked and I was in tears for a bit because I could not understand what I was seeing. I did not know that type of racism and that's me being uneducated as well. Um, so I feel like I'm so behind that. Like it needed to happen so much. Unfortunately, it needed to happen, but it needed to happen. And I um, was a huge supporter of that because like I say, just people are people to me. That's kind of my motto. It doesn't matter Absolutely. whatever the features or the differences like our differences are what make us who we are not one of us are the same so why is it so frowned upon and why can't people accept that or admire it even like it's what makes us unique and that's what I'll never understand <laughs> totally. I could rant about it all day no I'm totally on the same page and that's exactly one of the things that is so great about you because that is how you see the world and I think that that is how we should all be seeing the world. We should all be looking at the world and, and seeing others as magnificently diverse. It's like a splendorous thing. You look around and you see all this interesting culture and all this interesting ability. Um, and unfortunately, our society hasn't shifted yet in that direction. My hope is that through the work that you are doing and others like you being a beacon of light into society, there will be a massive shift. Do you think that disabled people are such a minority um, or, or so underrepresented in, in how people respond to them because of the fact that disabled people are distributed all over the world? There's not like a single concentration where in the past they could have really had that resolved. But now through technology, there might be a time when disabled people can get much better representation. What are your thoughts on that? Um, well, I just think it's a absolutely massive minority. Like I don't really know of kind of any people in like the Northeast of England, like my kind of area who have the same or even remotely similar like disability to me. I, I feel like it's always great when you can attend events and stuff. I know there's a lot of amputee camps and I've met a couple of people and going down um, to see a little girl called Harmony. She's absolutely great. She's amazing. She's six years old and she's missing legs on um, her, both her hands and the tip of her nose from the same disease that I had. And I feel like it's always really, really motivating when you're able to go and like speak to people with the similar experiences because there's just, it is such a large minority and it's like you say, it's distributed so widely. So it's really hard to be able to connect to people in that 
kind of same sense because we relate on a lot like me and homie would relate on a lot and even people through social media who've got a completely unrelated disability to me like not even remotely similar but they'll still message me and be like thank you your page has given me so much confidence I've got like this disorder or this and I feel like I can relate to you in a sense of how we're treated because we're all under that same label the toxic label which is disabled and I hate that word so much because it's like you can have any form of disability under the sun like anything but you're still classed as that quote unquote disabled, which is, that's me putting quotation marks, um, disabled and everyone thinks like, if you fall under this category of disabled, that's when they start jumping to all the conclusions that they make that you mustn't be able to do this, 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 you mustn't be able to be happy. You mustn't be able to still like be smiling and have a positive mindset. And so I do definitely think it has caused a lot of problems, but I feel like now, um, talking about how the future can be better, social media will play a huge part in it because it's bringing a lot of people together. And I know enough about that from using my platform. And I'm really grateful that I'm able to connect people in like that way. It's not physical, it's not exactly the same, but if people can come to my page and feel like better about themselves and just realize that our differences should be shown off and like accentuated rather than hidden all the time and that it's okay to be different and it's okay to just be yourself and not care what other people think of you then I'm really really happy and messages like that always make my day like that's why I do what I do so I have a lot of respect for anybody who's doing similar activism or activism for any cause but disabled community needs a lot more recognition in my eyes. I fully agree. And I follow some really fascinating people who are doing work similar to the work that you do uh, and, and follow what they, what change they're bringing about in the world. So I think it's a really exciting time for that change to be happening. And it's, it's actually quite wonderful. Um, but Tilly, a lot of your, a lot of your own attitude and spirit, your positivity that you, you mentioned, I think has been an important part of your picture. And has that been always there? Or is that something that is more recent? Tell me about your positivity. Cool. So I kind of, to be honest, I haven't done a whole lot of work on my mindset. You know what? I feel like everybody's mindset is completely the same when we're little. Um, when we're really, really young, like, I don't know if you've seen like the adverts or like the experiments that have taken place where they'll have kids in a room and one could be in a wheelchair, one could be standing up, absolutely fine. One could be blonde and one could be like have ginger hair. And the difference would be if you ask the kids, what do you think is different between you and that little girl in the wheelchair over there? And they would say, oh, well, she's got ginger hair and I've got blonde hair. And it's like, that's what they first recognize. It's not the big difference that everybody seems to like frown upon, which just shouldn't be the case whatsoever. It's the little things like, oh, she's got blue eyes, I've got brown eyes. And it's when we grow up and we start caring about other people's opinions and being overwhelmed by the negative side of social media what is classed as perfect what is classed as beautiful and what just isn't beauty lies in the eyes of the beholder which is something i believe in a lot i feel like anybody could be beautiful and beauty definitely comes from within and yeah i hate the whole beauty standards that society has and that's what i like to trying to diminish as much as possible it just shouldn't exist because beauty can have so many different forms so I feel like the mindset thing for me I've kind of just held on to how I used to think and how everyone used to think when they were little um I do get negative comments like everybody gets negative comments but to be honest if I'm ever feeling down I just try and remember everything that I need to be grateful for I'm alive I could have died when I was one years old. I'm 15. Like I was predicted death like 14 years ago. So it was not, 
I always try and remember that as much as possible. I have my legs, I'm healthy, I'm able to speak. Um, meningitis can come with so many other problems like mentally and stuff, whereas I'm all good there. So there's a lot of things that could have happened. And as well, just being grateful for the people I have in my life. The doctor who amputated my arms in a way that I can wear cool prosthetics, which I love to do now. Had that not happened, I'd be in a completely different situation. Thankful for my family for always being behind me and my friends, of course, who've always been really, really supportive. The NHS here in England and that I've always been able to get the medical care I need um, the, with the big operation. I had and everything like that I feel like it's really important for anyone just to sit back if they're ever feeling low and like just indulge in that for a bit and remember everything that we have and everything that the world is doing for us a cool experiment that I found out like a cool kind of method to remember that is I saw to like kind of look around and try and pick one thing in the room right now that is not showing up in your life to serve you like even just a painting on the wall it's like showing you art it's beauty in its own way I'm sat on a chair for comfort and I don't know like the tv enjoyment you know what I mean um I've got a roof over my head that shelter a lot of people don't have that and that's what people forget when they get like so wrapped up in their own mind and what they don't like about themselves and what they don't like about their life they forget all the good things that actually are sticking around and are here for us today so that's kind of a little thing that I always like to do but I haven't done too much work on it I feel it's just quite natural <laughs> That's really fantastic that you that you have that mindset and thank you for sharing those tips on how to practice gratitude. I think it's such a <laughs> such an important message. You you have had already an astonishing life and it's so great that you're finishing up with your your schooling now. I mean it's it gives you such an advantage. As you said, you've got two more years. It's really cool that you've been able to do that. What what are your plans for the future? Are you able to share some of that with us? Um, <laughs> I'm quite, um, quite a little bit indecisive. I'm doing a lot of things, which I all, which I enjoy like equally so much. I love doing the motivational speaking. I'm like, I love doing social media. I love doing presenting. So that's just three. Um, I'm definitely going to be keep on working with Open Bionics, hopefully until the day I die, unless I get the sack, which I'm not expecting. Um, <laughs> but um, I'm definitely going to be working on that, um, educating people as much as possible. I can online or in the flesh, physically doing motivational speaking and just talking to a lot of people. I would love to write a book at some point. Mm -hmm. And I'm definitely going to be making all the developments with Open Bionics for these Bionicoms so that we can all see like the lasers in the hands which we need like yeah it's all fun and games like getting the practical things like an automatic wrist would make me very very happy and a prosthetic but really I want projectors and lasers you get me so they're the type <laughs> of advancements I'm going to be making in my time and of course we'll have the practical automatic wrist at some point hopefully as well but yeah there's quite a lot going on I'm just going with the flow getting my GCSEs under my belt and seeing what comes next I guess brilliant brilliant stuff there was a link to a movie am I right you're connected to elite in some way right yeah <laughs> can you tell us a little bit about that sure um so there was a movie I think it was it like three years ago now dad that it came out I think it was like three years ago that it came out, Elite Battle Angel. And um, basically, it's about, I don't know if you've seen it, have you? I've seen some of it. I think I saw the first half of it so far. Cool. Yeah, so it's a really cool movie, sci -fi, yeah. science fiction based off of a manga. And there's uh, the main character in the movie is called El Elita. And she's basically got a really cool robotic body. It's a movie and a character that I can definitely relate to a lot because um, it's not oftentimes that there is like a big disabled role in such, especially like a film by 20th Century Fox, like this big action packed science fiction film. It was really, really cool. But I basically got the surprise of a lifetime when I went down to London and I was just chilling. I was just chilling, like doing my own thing. And then I ended up in the Dorchester, which is this proper posh restaurant in London. I was like, I do not belong here. What am I doing here? Um, and I 
was basically being called into a room. I really had no idea what was going on. I should have questioned it a bit more, but I just didn't um, <laughs> in the moment. But I was basically, they were said, some people said to me, okay, Tilly, we're going to call you in and then you're going to walk in a, this room. And I thought I was in London for a modeling shoot to like launch this, the hero arm and like do some nice like marketing pictures and stuff like that. Um, but when I was called into this room, I was expecting like some white photography screen, a couple of cameras, you know what I mean? Um, one photographer. But when I opened the door, I was faced with about eight filming cameras and brand new set of arms on a table with John Lando, um, John Lando, Lando and Sammy Payne, who is the CEO of Open Bionics. And they had this box, which I quite clearly recognized to be a hero on box because it was a long kind of shape and said open bionics on it. So I was like, hmm, okay, that's not what I was expecting. And it was then I figured out that these hands were basically for me and they were designed by open bionics and the team at 20th Century Fox together. The 20th Century Fox guys down there and they funded for me to get these bionic arms and they'd been basically trying to replicate the um, elite berserker body arms in real life and they chose for these arms to go to me which was insane like that is insane that is like it's crazy when I think back on it and I was then told right then and there okay now you're going to the premiere so thank god that I wore a nice outfit because oh my <laughs> you know red carpet material um but it was actually a blue carpet in that case and I was literally shaking with excitement in the room I was just like how am I here right now and I got to watch the film with all the stars in the room and it was quite funny because at the end um when all the credits were going off everybody who was in the credits was in the room so everybody was like hey that's me and like cheering and I thought that was really really funny just behind the scenes little funny business which I just shouldn't really be experiencing but hey I did it and that was fun um but it was like one of the best nights of my life it was so much fun I was shaken with excitement and happiness and then I got a whole new set of bionic arms as well so like it honestly couldn't have been better and I left the movie feeling like a proper queen um after seeing Alita absolutely like nail it in the film she's such a strong empowering character and Absolutely. i felt quite honored to have her arms <laughs> that's so incredible that's that's a really really cool story uh it, it's astonishing to see that there are so many great people out in the world doing so much good work and that these people aren't really getting enough recognition really i mean we focus on so much negativity in society and so your story is one of turning something that we call a disability into a huge superpower. And I really hope that you continue to inspire others to create a story of their own, which is their own journey to becoming a superhero. Tilly, I can't wait to see what you do in the future. I think you are uh, utterly astounding star and I think it's going to be amazing to see the things that you're going to do uh, so I will follow closely thank I, you I, I wanted we'll to thank you, you. <laughs> <laughs> thank you Tilly and I wanted to thank you so much for for joining us for this conversation please keep inspiring everyone and uh, keep up the great work thank you so much thanks for talking to me thank you for having me I guess it's been lovely talking to you it's been my pleasure. Thank you, Tilly. Bye.